Hey everybody, welcome to another Rapid Fire Review, this time for Diablo 2 Resurrected. Before we get into the remaster, let's talk a bit about the original. Diablo 2, in almost every way, is a legendary 10 out of 10 game. Now, certainly not perfect, but it's close enough. It defined the genre, raised the bar, broke the molds, changed the game, and all the other things that used to be plastered on CD jewel cases and boxes when PC games still had jewel cases and boxes. It was peak Blizzard, that six, seven year sweet spot when they put out Diablo, Starcraft, Diablo 2, Warcraft 3, and WoW. Now, I've played a lot of Diablo 2 in my day. It was always on the LAN rotation for the time. We do loot runs at the Net Cafe after school, all waiting for the Counter Strike or Day of Defeat games to start. We trade SOJs, charms, and eventually runes for PC time, Magic the Gathering cards, or items in EverQuest. It was the best. It really did do all those things that the PR tagline said, intentionally or not, and so much so that the games imitating it or inspired by it are still very much alive and successful today. So, being a 20-year-old legend with just a new paint job makes reviewing this version hard, almost impossible, especially so since the original is on my all-time greats list. But here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do my very best to look at this game as it exists now in relation to the games of today. In essence, seeing how this repainted classic actually stacks up to the games that now stand upon its shoulders. We have seven fairly unique classes, all with different playstyle options, weapons, diverse skill trees, and weaknesses. NPC mercenaries offer the player the missing piece to help fill in the gaps that each class has, even if it's simply there to fight the random magic immune bad guy. As with all games in this genre, there are certainly best-in-slot builds for each class, so though there appears to be a ton of diversity, there's actually a lot less than you'd think. On normal difficulty, though, you can almost certainly get away with all the wrong items and abilities. Hell, you can even run around naked and still beat Diablo. The maps did not age too poorly for the most part, with a few notable exceptions. The maggot layer, of course, is still awful. You must go through several floors of mazing tunnels, single file, with no visibility, constantly getting stuck behind mercenaries, other players, or maggot slime doors that won't open until you find the exact right pixel at the exact right distance. The AI never could figure out how to maneuver through it, and since none of the AI was touched up, it still can't. It's of course a mandatory zone that was always miserable, and aged as you would expect a maggot layer to age after 20 years of sitting in the desert. The first few acts progress in a fairly satisfying way, until we get to the fourth. We stage an invasion into hell to take on the big bad guy, you know, the one on the box. But it feels more like an unceremonious field trip to hell for about 20 minutes. It starts and is over before you know it. It was just as disappointing 20 years ago as it was today. Fortunately for this release, we don't have to wait for the fifth act to bulk up the experience, but it still feels criminally short. Overall, the gameplay for this version feels pretty good, even under the modern lens. I feel it's still above average. You gotta remember, there are some real stinkers in this genre. The gameplay is still every bit as frustrating, satisfying, unforgiving, random, and ridiculous as I remember. If you're new to Diablo 2, there's some things you want to watch out for. You have very limited respecking options, which leads to the inability to try new builds, even if you do get a sweet new weapon for your class. Then there are the corpse runs within corpse runs within corpse runs, massive gold loss on death, mercenary resurrection costs, instant doorway ambush death, lightning ghosts sniping you from off screen, lightning scarabs just existing. And of course, everyone's favorite undead stabby pygmy buttholes, erasing you from the book of life in an instant. Now this is a loot game, so let's talk about the loot system. It's certainly a relic from 20 years ago. Now, I'm not talking about the variety of loot, or the magic find system, or the gambling system. The sheer amount of loot in this game is incredible. But I'm talking about the frequency that low-level loot drops, especially during your first playthrough. Which, if we're honest, for games, is most people's only playthrough. It would be unheard of in a modern loot-centric game for you to be beating the final boss using several items you found at the first zones in your first few levels. And that's the case here. I even made it through the game three times on all three difficulties with the offhand OJ gave me at normal at level three. 
Now, it certainly does pick up on harder difficulties later on once you get the gear for loot runs, but that means you have to beat the game at least once, if not twice, to get to the good part where, you know, the addiction starts. When you stay up far too long because you stupidly think, I'll just do this run until I get the next good drop, and then the sun comes up. Now, I've come down hard on other games for having systems or mechanics that aren't good until subsequent playthroughs, or until you lock different difficulties, and I have to do it here. For Endgame, there really isn't much content here either. We do have a bit of bovine bloodshed to be had, but nothing like rifts or maps to speak of. Just the same five or six long established runs looking for runes and uniques. The updated visuals and cutscenes all look great. You know, they're not mind-blowing or anything compared to what's out there today, but it is a solid upgrade, especially when you swap back and forth. Other than the graphics, Blizzard did decide to make a small handful of changes. The biggest being removal of TCP IP connection, for some stupid ass reason. In theory, this would have been fine, I guess, if the servers were stable. But they weren't. And that ruined our LAN party, you know, that people flew across country to come to. It also gave us all sorts of issues, launch weekends, streaming. To this day, three weeks after launch, the servers are still not stable. This last weekend, servers were down again. Rollbacks are still happening, undoing dozens of loot runs, drops, and forcing people to redo content. It's absolutely unacceptable. I don't care how much I love this game, if I had my maggot layer run on hell rolled back, I would have uninstalled. There are other few, mostly minor changes Blizzard made for this version. Mostly quality of life stuff with storage, clicking, and accessibility. But honestly, they should have probably done more. The NPC AI is still atrocious. Your mercenary has two modes. The default mode appears to be a goddamn crayon eating space cadet that will just stand there licking windows while you are dying. Or it'll get stuck in a room somewhere, spinning in circles, and won't teleport to you as intended, no matter how far away you get. The second, less common mode is Leroy Jenkins. They will run off screen into whatever guaranteed death awaits, for no reason. If there was a running wood chipper slightly off screen, that imbecile would be swan diving into it the first chance they got. There are also other issues that range from situationally annoying to downright unacceptable for a modern game, and that could have easily been changed or at least given the option to toggle in the menu. As a massive fan of the original, this game was an easy pickup for me. It was satisfying and nostalgic, and I got to share a childhood game that I love with people who had never played. Even now, I'm still trading set items unique and runes with friends and people from the show. I play a bit every day and probably won't stop for a while, at least until I get the gear and rune words I want. But so much of that is the rose-tinted glasses and the nostalgia. But I've got to give a score to this version of the game on its own, without considering the importance of the original. This version of the game feels pretty solid for 40 bucks. There is plenty to do, there's a decent story with good cutscenes, and diverse gameplay with a ton of replayability if the loop feels good to you. But it still has server issues, and had an awful launch. It's got a dated UI that honestly feels pretty bad at times and should have been updated. Horrible AI that's pretty much inexcusable, and its slow loop progression at the start requires a huge time investment to get going. So with all of that, if I really do try to be honest about how this game stacks up to other games of today, I'm going to have to give Diablo 2 Resurrected a 6. I do think it's a good game on its own, but the competition today is better, and our expectation for games are higher. If you're like me and you love the original, you'll love this one. Newcomers may find it a little rough though, and it's almost unplayable with the server state as it is now. This game needed a bit more than a new look to keep the 10 out of 10 score. I get that they were scared after absolutely ruining Warcraft 3's remake, but this game needed some polish and tweaks, and if they were really that afraid, they could have given you the toggle option. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know in the comments what you think of this remake, and if you have some spare Enigma runes lying around. We shall see you on the next Angry Joe Show.